In this video, we'll practice converting matrices to reduced row echelon form using elementary row operations. Recall that elementary row operations consist of the following three things. Swapping rows, multiplying a row by a constant, and adding a multiple of a row to another row. If we think of each row of the matrix as representing a linear equation, then these are exactly the steps we might take to solve the system of linear equations. Recall also that a matrix is in reduced row echelon form if there is a leading one in each row that is not all zeros. The leading ones go in descending order, kind of like a staircase, although there can be some uneven steps. The leading ones have columns of zeros above them, and any rows that are all zeros are at the bottom. So this is our destination, or our goal, reduced row echelon form, and this is our methods of getting there. We'll see, in fact, that any matrix can be transformed to reduce row echelon form using just these elementary row operations. And the algorithm that we'll use to get there is called Gaussian elimination. So let's put the matrix for this system of linear equations into reduced row echelon form. The instructions talk about an augmented matrix. All that means is that we're going to write the coefficients of the first variable, x1, in the far left column, followed by the coefficients of x2, the coefficients of x3, and finally, these constants on the right side of the equations will go in the far right column. The constants can be thought of the additional or augmented part of the matrix. So the first equation becomes the row negative 7, negative 6, negative 12, negative 33. The next equation becomes 5, 5, 7, 24. And the last equation becomes 1. There's a 0 as the coefficient of x2, since x2 doesn't appear in this equation and then 4 is the coefficient of x3, and 5 is the constant term. To get this matrix in reduced row echelon form, I'm going to need a leading 1 in every row that's not all zeros. Well, I could get a leading 1 in the first row just by dividing the whole row by negative 7, but I think it's going to be easier instead to just swap the first and the third rows. So that will give me this new matrix. Now I'm going to try to get zeros in the column under this one so that the next leading ones will be to the right of this leading one as they're supposed to be. To get a zero in this position, I'm going to take negative 5 times the first row plus the second row and replace the second row with that sum. So negative 5 times the first row plus the second row goes to where the second row is. The first row I'll just copy over. Now in the second row, negative 5 plus 5 is 0. Negative 5 times 0 plus 5 is 5. Negative 5 times 4 plus 7 is negative 20 plus 7, so that's going to be negative 13. And negative 5 times 5 plus 24, that's negative 25 plus 24, so that's negative 1. I can also get a 0 in this position if I take 7 times the first row and add it to the third row. So that's 7 times r1 plus r3 goes in the r3 position. So that gives me 0, negative 6. Now 7 times 4 is 28 minus 12 is going to be 16. and 7 times 5 is 35, minus 33 is 2. Now that I've got a leading 1 on the left side of the first row and zeros below it, it's time to worry about getting a leading 1 in the next column somewhere. There are a couple possible approaches. I could multiply the second row by 1 fifth in order to turn that 5 into a 1. But since that will create some nasty fractions, I think instead I'd like to 
maybe add together these two rows and replace the, the, say, the second row with their sum. So that's R2 plus R3 goes in the R2 position. I'll just copy over the first row. I'm not going to change it. And the second row becomes the sum. So that's 0, minus 1, 3, and 1. I'll copy the third row down for now, too. Now I just have to multiply the second row by negative 1. And I'll have my leading 1 in the second row. Now I'm going to work to get zeros below this leading one. So I want to get a zero here, so I can do that by taking 6 times row 2 and adding it to row 3. 6 R2 plus R3, and I'll replace R3 with that. I'll copy the first two rows over. And now in the third row, I'll get 6 times 0 plus 0 is 0. 6 times 1 minus 6 is 0, like I want it to be. 6 times minus 3 plus 16, that's minus 2. 6 times minus 1 plus 2 is minus 4. So now I've got a leading one in the first row with zeros below it, a leading one in the second row with zeros below it. My next job is to get a leading one in the third row. And to do that, I'm just going to multiply the third row by 1 over negative 2. That gives me this matrix which has a leading one in every row, and the leading ones are in descending order. There are no rows of all zeros that I have to worry about, but there is one more thing I have to fix. I need to have zeros above each of the leading ones. I'm fine here, because there's nothing above it, fine here, because there's a zero above it, but here, I need to make zeros in these rows above this one. Now I can do that by adding a multiple of row three to each of row 2 and row 1. To get rid of the negative 3 in row 2, I'm going to take 3 times R3 and add it to R2 and replace R2 with that. To get rid of the 4 in row 1, I'm going to take negative 4 times R3 plus R1 and replace R1 with it. Notice that that won't mess up any of the progress we've made with these leading ones here and all these zeros because row 3 just has zeros everywhere before that leading one, so adding a multiple of it to the previous rows won't mess up the, the columns over here that have the zeros in them. Okay, so I'll copy the third row down as it is now. not making any changes to this. For the second row, I need... 3 times row 3 plus row 2, so that's going to give me 0, 1, 0, and then 3 times 2 plus negative 1 is going to be 6 minus 1, which is 5. Now the first row gets replaced by negative 4 times R3 plus R1, so that's just 1, 0, 0 here. And negative 4 times 2 is negative 8 plus 5 gives me negative 3. I now have a matrix in reduce row echelon form, and I can use it to read off the solution to my system of equations. My solution is just x1 is negative 3, x2 is 5, and x3 is 2. So before we leave this problem, Let's just review some of the steps we took to get ourselves into reduced row echelon form. We first focused on getting a 1 in the top row and as far left as possible to get a leading 1 there. Then we got zeros below it by adding multiples of that first row to the other rows. Then we kind of moved down and in a bit and focused on getting a 1 in this next position, or at least in the second row, as far left as we could. Once we had the 1 there, we could use multiples of this second row to get zeros below it. Finally, we got a leading 1 in the third row, as far left as we could. And once we had 
worked forwards like that to get our leading ones in descending order, we could go back up and get zeros above them as needed by using multiples of the row to eliminate the numbers in the rows above it. This systematic process that we use is called Gaussian elimination. In this video, we used elementary row operations to put a matrix into reduced row echelon form in a systematic process called Gaussian elimination. This process is complex and it takes a while to get adept at it, but once you do, you'll have a powerful tool for solving systems of linear equations efficiently.